All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Dadasu stream again. Really the same stream that it was earlier today. We are into the second part of the second scenario. Final chapter, final battle, probably? I don't know. I'm like 50-50 on that. Maybe there will be another battle after this, maybe not. I almost kind of hope that there is. Uh, just because this... I don't know. I like how better balanced this fight is so far. But... Uh, it seems a little bit less epic than the first one. And of course, part of the reason the first scenario's finale was so epic was... Oh, hey. We're having this problem again. I haven't changed any of my settings, and yet this is happening. Oh, you know what it is. This is the Genesis. <laughs> this is my Shining Force 2 layout right here. Uh, yeah, we need to flip this over to this. And there you are, Remuko. Hello. We got one of you guys in here for the big finale, at least. It's a shame that some of you guys out there are going to miss it. We are streaming a bit later than usual, going late into the evening to get this done before I got to go to work. Basically before my work week starts. Basically Thursday, Friday is my weekend, and then my work week starts. So I kind of, that's kind of the reason why I like to get things done on Fridays. Oh, Brick Road was streaming. Shit, I'm actually a bit sorry that I missed that. Oh, 20 XDX too. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to catch the uh, the vod of that. I bet you he hated it. I'm I'm usually I'm iffy on guessing which games Brick Road is gonna like. Like I I yeah, there's just no predicting what the hell he's gonna like. But I'm usually pretty decent at predicting the games that he's gonna hate. And I'm gonna guess that he hated. 20 XDX. That must have been a patron's choice. Anyways, um, I don't hate this game. At least not yet. We'll see where they go with this final battle here. I remember, actually, thinking back, I, I really was kind of turned against the first scenario for a little while uh, based on how just annoyed I was with the stupidity of some of the specific aspects of the final scenario. I got over it eventually. I was able to kind of view the whole package in retrospect and see how solid it was overall. Um, I believe we're at the... Yeah, we are right in the heat of it. Uh, right at the top of a new round. Where were we precisely? Neither of these guys is disabled. Oh yeah, Pegasus Knight is basically frozen, so we're going to want to get some damage on this. Oh no, he's... I must have highlighted the wrong dude. Um, in that case, we don't really need to waste Synthesis's MP at all. Uh, yeah, Campbell can just finish this guy off. Oh and shit, he got a weapon level too. That's still one of the things I think I need to do a little bit better going into the next scenario, is be better about paying attention to my character's uh, specific levels with each weapon. Because it seems like some love, some characters are kind of behind in, wep in weapon proficiencies that I kind of wish they would have. If I'm tripping over my words a bit, it's because I just got back from a d and session, and I usually drink at those, so uh, here we are. Got some tea to counteract that a little bit, but we'll see where it goes. I don't, I, I don't like doing drunk streams in general, especially, you know, big finales of games that I've kind of been making a big feature of the channel and everything. I, it always feels good in the moment. I really enjoy the slightly tipsy streams. But then I look back at them and, like, view the VOD, and it's like, oh, this was not good. I wish I had not done this. And yet here we are. Uh, three beers after a D&D &D session, and uh, whatever. It's fine. This last fight, at least so far, seems way easy compared to the Scenario 1 final battle. Ha! 
<laughs> oh yeah, I, or I, yeah, I assume that uh, Brick Roads 20 XDX stream showed up in my auto host. So yeah, I, I remember I switched you guys over to Sand Knight's Azure Dreams stream without realizing that he was just uh, streaming a race with no commentary. <laughs> I probably would not have done that if I had realized he was uh, in no commentary mode, but whatever, I'm sure it was entertaining regardless. Sand Knight is a really, really skilled Azure Dreams player. So there's no doubt that there was at least some enjoyment to be had. The problem is he's a uh, he's a really good commentator too. So uh, I would you're kind of missing out when he's uh, doing streams without commentary. At least in my opinion, not getting the full value, you know. Oof. Uh, you know what? I think we got a charge. Oh, we can't get her in range, or can we? Yeah, let's get to work on this guy. Hey <laughs> there, point click. Yeah, I'm kind of a lightweight myself. I don't drink that often. Which I think is the best way to do it. You just end up wasting a lot of money when you start developing a high tolerance for alcohol. So yeah, I can get drunk on like eight bucks worth of beers. And that's, I think, a pretty good place to be. At least when you're in the mood to... Oh, wow, I can't believe we can actually get this guy from here. But yeah, I just got back from a DD and d session. And I usually have a few beers at those. Um, oh, wow, we can even hit him with the bird. Okay, this is getting a bit confusing, because some of the cows are my cows, and some of the cows are enemy cows. And there's actually literally zero distinguishing between them. This could be an enemy cow, for all I know. Reasonably sure that we cleared out all the enemy cows, though, and uh, there's nothing but friendly cows left to deal with. Hmm. Um, no, I never actually lost to Garvin here. But when we first came at this fight, um, I had, what, I had Penko in this party, along with Arthur, who are basically my two shittiest characters in the party. And I was down a cow, also. So I just kind of looked into the future, brought out that crystal ball, and I just saw that there was no hope of winning this fight. So yeah, I went back, I did a ton of grinding, and uh, here we are again. A little bit more well prepared. Honestly, I think the grinding <laughs> was probably irrelevant in the end. I probably probably could have won this fight uh, just with the resources I had, just bringing in different characters onto the B team. But we got to promote Penko and see what she looks like, so that was something we got out of that whole two-hour grinding marathon, at least. Uh, so this guy's coming down, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Yeah, we're probably going to kill the boss by the time these guys get up and do anything dangerous. In fact, yeah, these guys have, what, 170 HP each? It's not even worth my time to bother with them. Hey, finally the, the cow crit. Yeah, these monsters kind of suck. I don't even care if he kills the griffin here. And he can't even one-shot the monsters. Yeah, this is so much easier. Oh yeah, I guess depending on how many characters you found. Yeah, you could be going into this with, uh, with just David, actually. Shit, I think the Monster Tamer kid is optional too. Like, yeah, if you went through this game finding only the minimum amount of characters, you would be literally just solo David for this. Or I think the Monster Tamer kid is found somewhere in this town. Uh, you know, I think we just have him stand guard and uh, keep Hedva from taking damage. Yeah, in fact, yeah, if we had missed Rock and Waltz, 
that would be our current situation. Uh, we would... Because, yeah, we have 15 characters in the party. We have no choice but to have a full force of 12 in the A team. So, yeah, if you miss more than f more than three characters, then, yeah, it's just solo David for the, uh, for the final battle here, which is basically impossible. That's actually terrible, now that I think of it. I wonder if that's happened to anyone, or to many people, that you just don't recruit enough characters to win this fight here. Or you know what? Even with the Beast Tamer kid in the A-Team, though, you can still recruit him and get the monsters. So even then, you always have the option of recruiting the kid and getting the monsters. So it would be David and, like, five Minotaurs. Although, if it's solo David, you probably want better than Minotaurs. You would probably go for, uh, I don't know, something better than Minotaurs. So it's not like, yeah, they, they thought this through. You have an out, no matter what your situation. Oh, you can actually tame the queen worm? That's awesome. Yeah, just get five queen worms and there, you're set. Have an easier time, have an even easier time of it than we are. Oh. I got so into my, uh, just so excited about finishing the game today. I kind of planned my day around it. It's like, okay, I've got to go out for board game night later on, and I've got to finish Scenario 2 today. And that was basically my two priorities. I forgot to schedule time for meals in between there. Uh, so yeah, this... Uh, whoa. Uh, this right here is my supper. I'll probably eat something after the stream and just have a bit of a late night in the end. Also, that M&M that rolled off the table is way past the three second rule. But I keep my floors pretty clean, so I'm gonna eat it anyways. Like, yeah, this dude here, oh, I'm just off of being able to cast uh, Thor 2. We got Wendigo 2, though. Oh, but that dude is next to him. What a dick. In that case, we probably do freeze. Better than dividing damage. Or is it? Yeah, we would have had to do about 100, 90 to 100 damage total with the summon to make that worthwhile. It would have been about the same, but we would have spent more MP. Oof, that's with the crit, too. Goodness. So Griffin's probably going down this round. Oh, right, Uryudo can go in and uh, do the summon magic, but uh, same problem. Two guys right next to each other. Whatever, let's clean them out. If this does even 30 damage, I'll be happy. Hey, there we go. I think it'll be one more round to kill this guy at this rate. Also, that, that bow centaur up there is a smart man, or a smart horseman. Doesn't want none of this. Oof. Oh, Uryudo's clean out of MP, too. He's gonna go on the Griffin, right? Regret hit reduces his HP to one, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's a shame. Ah, uh, that's fine. We can just bring the Minotaur around. 
That'll actually give our other Minotaur a space to get in there. This is this opens up Hedva, but that's probably fine because I think she's gonna just kill him at the top of the next round. This is way easy compared to the giant robot fight in Scenario 1. Jesus. I feel like maybe we overgrinded for this fight. Also, there's my mouse cursor. Hopefully you guys can't see that. Honestly, we might as well charge up and just beat the hell out of their remaining mace guy there, but... Eh, like I said, we got plenty of experience already. Hera, on the other hand, might as well heal someone for the XP. Guess it's gonna be Campbell. We know he's missing HP. So all my dudes ended up pretty tough in the end. Basically everyone in the party is uh, pulling their weight. Even Penko, a little bit. Since at least if she gets the lucky crit, she can get the blind on people. Honestly, I think my biggest regret in terms of uh, powering up party members is that... Uh, okay, might, might as well use as much MP as we can here. I think that's going to be... Oh, can't quite afford the four. Shit. I think it's going to be freeze one again. Or freeze three. Although, even that's going to take him out. He's got 6 HP. Okay, I have no idea what's going to happen after this. Although, we did manage the perfect victory in the end here. I don't think any of my party members died. Not even the monsters. We lost one green rat, and that was it. Yeah, I'd imagine that very, very few players take the time to level up Penko. It is a very time-consuming process for what you get out of it in the end. Yay! I'm actually really disappointed that we didn't get to see the Juggernaut in action there. Who do we even fight after this? Who's the other main bad guy? This feels really anticlimactic. Like, are we... Is there another chapter after this? What the hell? Ooh. Yasha. Oh yeah, this guy. Wait a sec, yeah, isn't Yasha on our side? What the hell? Holy shit. This Domeric guy is just behind everything. It's like he manipulated his son into kidnapping him so that he could start a war, a war and out his son as a traitor. And now he's manipulated this, uh, this train town dude. 
to reviving a juggernaut so that he can... I don't even know why he's doing all of this this time. He even made me friggin' do four escort missions for him, the bastard. Do I get to drive the tank for the next battle? That would be really cool. That's a good question. I actually have no idea what's going on right now. Oh, we get to fight the tank after all? Are we not done yet? This is both exciting and scary in equal measure. How did they conceal such a huge cannon? Probably with their even huger tank. It is not really that difficult to conceal huge guns inside of huge machines. Just watch any mecha anime. They do it all the time. This tank has a cannon? Who ever heard of such a thing? Like, what did they think that this thing was? Just, like, literally a giant... Uh... Like a giant, giant troop transport vehicle? It's like a weapon inside this ancient weapon. Who'd have thought? Well, this actually makes a little bit of sense, then. It's like two birds with one stone. Domeric wants us to fight the tank, to force him to use the tank's suicide weapon, and then he takes out both this dude and Aspia's wall all at once. I think we sided with the... I think we were wrong to stand against the Emperor this whole time. He is clearly... Oh, shit. Like, they're just unconscious and not... not alive, right? Oh fuck, is David dead? Is Hedva dead? Is whoever else we put in there dead? Who else did we put in there? David, Hedva... Uryudo! Oh fuck, we're fucked if Uryudo is gone. Oh, also, I didn't think of this. If we've got a follow-up fight against some kind of final boss, just like Arant in Scenario 1, uh, we are super fucked and we're going to have to redo all of this because uh, I don't know how we defeat an Arant-like final, uh, final battle without our priest. Maybe they learned through their lesson this time and gave us a checkpoint. I don't know. We'll see. Now what? All right, these guys. Wait, <laughs> is this the big final battle? This random Aspian general, who I forget who he is.
I'm surprised that this guy's... Yeah, I am very surprised that this guy was able to follow this game's plot at all. Now I'm... Oh shit, it's it's the B team from Scenario 1. <laughs> oh, did I misread that? Do we fight against them and not with them? I don't know, this could still turn on a dime. I have no idea where this is going to end up. <laughs> he said it. He said the thing. Oh, that's great. That can't have been in the original Japanese script, right? That's, he's gotta be... They've gotta, the translators have gotta be memeing right there. There's no way it says that in the original Japanese. I mean, not that I'm complaining. I appreciate a good bit of memery in an English script. <laughs> Oh, fuck me. This is just like scenario one. We're into the final boss fight. And we left our priest inside the tank to get blown up. He's got the photon blade. Is that the one that Arant had that lets him cast bolt or uh, lets him cast spark two on everything forever? Oh, no. Yasha's. Yasha is going to be the spark user for this fight. Although he actually has it innately, so he actually has to worry about MP. He can cast it, like, four times. Which is more than enough, because, like an idiot, I put my priest on the B team. Okay, it looks like he... I don't know, he might have the same stats I left him with in Scenario 1, for all I know. No, surely I gave these guys better equipment than this. This store-bought garbage. Well, okay. Let's not make the same mistake we made last time. If we fuck this up, we can just reload. I actually don't think these are the mercs we had in Scenario 1. Yeah, actually, these are the enemies we fought against in Scenario 1, I think, because one of these giant armors was, uh, was guarding the wheel on the, um, on the dam. Okay, thankfully these enemies are actually weaker than the dudes we just fought. Mainly, we just gotta worry about magic right now. Ah, uh, I was hoping they'd try to run at us. Well, let's see what we can do. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, good. It's too high up for him to uh, cast anything on us. It also looks like he doesn't get his bonus action every turn. The same way that Arant did. So that's good. I think I might just use Penko to try to bait him up. She's not really good for much else right now. Nope, still not taking it. That's fine, I'm patient. I can sit here for a little while. Ah, he's going for it. What a chump. Oh shit, I thought she would be in range for that. Do I charge median in like an idiot? I think maybe I do. 
Oh, you know what I actually do? <laughs> okay. Oh, I should have I should have moved uh, Synthesis up too. That's juicy. Let's do that. Ooh, if we can get Synthesis up for one of these, we'll just take them all out at once. <laughs> this is like the opposite of Scenario 1. It's like we're Arant, and they're the Symbios Force again. Oh, we can, even, we can even wipe him out with Arthur. Make a suicide charge, and he makes the, the spark level 1. Oh, they one of those guys missed out on the first bolt. Kazuchio, take you out, eh? That's what it sounded like he said. Ah, not quite enough damage. We got Justin, though, at least. The useless bastard. This doesn't carry over to Scenario 3, right? We didn't murder him permanently? Uh, that's maybe fine. This is a super risky move, bringing out Median to the front like this. With no priest in the party. Okay, we got Hera. Damn it, she's got no offensive magic at all. This sucks. I'm gonna heal three just to keep him safe. This wipes out half of her MP, but eh, hopefully it'll be worth it. Okay, that is a big fist. Okay, apparently it's just for show. Uh, we actually do have to worry about noon a little bit here. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yeah. Sorry, Noon. I was not in the mood to bury your Arctic Blast right there. Ah, oh, I didn't even get to make them bear my Arctic Blast! Ah, uh, who's it gonna be? Oh, hey, she's actually got advantage against the Sorcerer for some reason. Oh shit, this might actually kill him. Fucking hell, Panko. There's that rooster crow again. <laughs> she actually got a really solid level up, too. What the hell? She actually did something useful. Showed her worth before probably getting killed right here. Goodbye, Panko. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Penko. You tanked a hit for us. Can probably get Finding here, too. Yeah, B team is got kind of garbage. That's why they were the B team in the first place. This fight looks a bit anticlimactic, to be honest. I guess difficulty wise, that's been sort of the whole scenario so far. It's like the first one, but easier. Even though it's the second one. Okay, good. They're retreating, so they're not dying or anything. <laughs> oh, I should have gone for the giant armor. Ah, oh, well. Yeah, these guys all suck. Oh yeah, Campbell hasn't moved this whole fight. Get him! 
He's worth one XP when you kill him. <laughs> it's like, why? Why are you attacking us? I totally tried to make peace with you guys, and you insisted on frigging attacking me. Mm. I'm gonna go for the Bow Knight just on the off chance so that we get like a blind or a paralyze. Or just tons of damage. That works too. Ah, poor Syntasis. She could have done so much for us if I'd have put her up near the front. Okay, he's not using the magic. Yeah, it's like their guys are the same as my guys, only shittier. I feel like the enemy's gotta have some reinforcements coming later. This is just too easy so far. Oh, we got spark level four. Unfortunately, I don't think I have the MP for it. Oh, but I will eventually with this uh, fancy new blade. I think I'm gonna heal the kid. Uh, so this is going a lot more quickly than I thought it would. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I kind of budgeted for about two to three hours of stream time I was willing to take to get this game finished, and it looks like at the rate we're going, we're not going to take anywhere near that. It's like they ex it's like we're underleveled or something. We're getting so much free XP for killing these chumps. Well, I mean, this fight's not over yet. We've still got to get through these guys, although I'm pretty sure... Arant had twice as much HP as these guys. Although, he was just one guy. Whereas these guys are two guys. Oh, they're going for it. No, they're not. They're running- they're backing up into the corner! But yeah, the reason Arant was just a terrible and obnoxious fight was because he could just spam lightning forever. Because he, he just had lightning on tap. He could just cast it infinitely and there was nothing you could do about it. Yeah, like this. Uh, this is, yeah, this is where having Uryudo not in the party is gonna fuck us over. Or, you know what? No, uh... Hera knows a resist spell. I should have been using that. Okay, we want to definitely defend Synthesis. Oh, right, he's not... For fuck's sake. <laughs> I, I mistook him for a party member. I forgot he was, a, he was here. I'll probably actually have to use some of my uh, consumables to heal everyone up. I actually don't mind sacrificing Arthur right here. I was hoping to sacrifice him for a little bit more damage than that, but yeah. Actually, here's what we do. I think we, uh... Rather than trying to heal any particular person, none of these guys is terribly valuable on their own, so I think what we do is we do a resist level 1 on the guys who just got hit. And then if they get hit again, they'll just barely survive it. Oh, that'd be just perfect, yeah, if we got Hazuki to get the last hit on Yasha. Ah.
This is not great. Or, you know what I should be doing is I should be using these guys' uh, spare turns to just heal themselves. Yeah, we have the power. I think I actually value Campbell the highest out of this whole squad. Oh, you know what? Uh, Uryudo's friendship bonus is uh, extra magic defense, too. That would be handy right about now. Um, I think we actually do want to take care of this guy first. Let's see that special! Ooh, that looks promising. And the kick! Oh, come on. What kind of death charge? What kind of death charge is that that doesn't death the enemy? That was false advertising. I want my money back. Um, let's keep Median well back of all of this. In fact, yeah, we'll just let him charge up his MP until he's ready to do some serious shit. Is it just me or did the music slightly cut out right here? Oh, hey, that's juicy. I'm actually going to do that. That'll take out the uh, mace guy, too. Give me a new spell! Looks like most it looks like most characters get their final spells at level 20, which is kind of a long way to go. Don't think I need to worry about status effects right now, so we'll uh, go for the healing drops. Oh, here we go. Now shit gets real. Do we ever use the sword or the tornado? Or do we ever heal someone? Eh, let's eat his bones. Oh, come on, Hazuki. Seriously? Right here, face to face with your mortal enemy? And now you don't think is the time to bring out the crit? Uh, that's pretty great. He chose not. <laughs> he could have hit everybody in the party with lightning, and he just decided that he didn't want to. Uh, so that's great. He's probably going to die right now. And Arthur's sacrifice was not in vain. Now the rest of the party doesn't have to get hit by lightning. Ah, uh, who needs healing right now? No one I can actually get in range of. I could do Pappets with the level 3 heal, but nah. You know, I think I'll just keep her back. She can't heal everyone anyways. So yeah, we'll just have her heal the people who survive. Is that the gimmick? Is just Yasha is crit-proof? He's gonna survive at this rate. This is awful. Oh, I think Hazuki's done. Ah, eh, not bad. She lives, for now. Okay, Pegasus Knight wants none of any of this, apparently. the blind. That means he's probably just going to bolt everything forever now. Okay, it's time to, for, to stop getting these stupid, uh, going for these stupid weapon levels. He's a tomahawk, he's a tomahawk man. Might as well just accept it. Yeah, the sound's cutting out. Did I accidentally switch it to mono sound? And forget to switch it back? No, we're in stereo. Uh, so that's basically the opposite of a crit right there. Okay, we got advantage here. Okay, get him! Get him good! Okay, one more hit should take him down. Uh, this is an emulator. I do not own a Sega Saturn. 
Lightning could do it. Yep, just like that. Yes! Okay, I think we got this, maybe? Because, yeah, that guy doesn't seem to have any big AoE spells, which is the main thing we're worried about right now. So if he's just got nothing, then it looks like we're going to win this. Yeah, the thing is, is because I've never played on an actual Sega Saturn, I don't know if this is just the kind of system it was. Just mega glitchy and everything. You know what, I'm just gonna have her heal herself and make this guy waste his time. He seems to prefer her for targeting, so... This is the part where we find out that Photon Blade has a innate lightning skill or some bullshit. I don't think this uh, fight is going to last more than one more round, so I guess we'll just support on everyone. I would have to get actual Saturn hardware to be sure, which I am kind of curious about. Like, if I saw one on the lo in a local shop uh, for a reasonable price, I might buy a Sega Saturn, but I w probably wouldn't go through this, the trouble of ordering one, ordering one online. I don't think that boost's gonna cut it. Nope. Wow, he actually does quite a bit of damage. Uh. Oh man. He was actually real smart, uh, heading into that corner there. Uh, it's gonna be a hard time getting people in position to actually hit him. Pegasus Knight still wants none of this. Carousel, that's a new one. <laughs> oh, I, w I wish that could be the way that we kill him. Oof. Well, he's not going to do much damage to Tybalt there, so we might as well start on the Pegasus. This does feel really anticlimactic. Is there going to be another fight after this? Okay, just to see it. I want to see a spark t if Spark 3 is going to do tons of damage on him. Boom! Um, I think we're going to have Hazuki go on the Pegasus here, just because she's got a uh, archer type with the Shuriken. This should kill him. Would have killed him. Oh, hey, this would be perfect. Poetic justice right here. Any type of crit, I think, will do 40 damage. Ah, uh, that's a new one. <laughs> what a beautiful way to end the game if this is actually the, fin the final fight. <laughs> Finally get to see that special skill out of his final sword. I wonder if that's scripted or if we just got lucky there. Oh, that's what a, what a beautiful what what what's the word for just a beautiful lucky coincidence like that? Oh, really? I didn't actually know that about uh, Shining Force One. Interesting. Wait a second. So he's here to avenge Arant, who kind of got screwed over by the Emperor. 
but it sounds like this is exactly what the Emperor wanted anyways. So this is like, we're on like six, six dimensional chess at this point that the Emperor's playing, where it's like he manipulated his son into kidnapping him to provoke a war to, and also out himself as a jerk to also get his son's ninja body card to, to avenge him in such a way that he'll blow up the Aspinian uh, wall along with some other random faction that stands against him. He's, he's like knocking down 30 bone, 30 birds with half a stone here. You tell me, Domeric. You're the only one who seems to know what the fuck is going on with anything. I mean, I don't know. We we de we dealt with the rejects from the Symbios army. I don't know about many generals. We they they defeated one captain who was sitting on top of a wheel. Really, I really like Domeric. I think uh, Emperor Domeric. I think he's my favorite character in the whole series so far. Ah, David survives. No. I mean, that's kind of the opposite of what I said. <laughs> he asked me, he, the, the question was, you're happy everyone's safe, right? And I said no for some reason, because that was an option. Oh, also, my chat's actually not showing up on, uh, on Streamlabs here for some reason. I guess it doesn't matter. I've got chat up in like three different windows on my second monitor here. I'm really curious where we're going with it from here in uh, scenario three then. Because like it seems like we've carried the plot forward just a little ways from scenario one, yet it seems like there's still tons of plot threads to be resolved. Like unless Scenario 3 is just a complete continuation from the previous scenarios, like we just pick up where Scenario 2 left off. I don't see how we're going to resolve all of this stuff. Like, there's still still two unkilled Bullzone cult leaders out there. Yes, he teleported. He's a ninja. We have seen him global teleport like six times at this point. Oh, is that the is that the trick here? There's like six Yashas. Honestly, if Scenario Three seems sees the same uh, rate of improvement that we saw from Scenario 1 to Scenario 2 and kind of fixes the difficulty curve, um, I think we could be in for a real treat, potentially. Yeah, I'm, I'm super glad that you killed all of your friends who you actually like better than me. I was kind of forced to battle with them because of them. 
I was I, I was all like, hey, wait, it was this Garvin guy who set all this in motion, and they're all like, fuck you, I want to fight anyways. So we had to fight them. Domeric kind of had nothing to do with it. It really kind of bothers me that they they're like, yeah, we beat the shit out of that Symbios army. It's like, no, you didn't. You beat the shit out of their like four or five weakest members who are too bad who were too bad to be put in the main army. It's like I'm getting offended on Symbios's behalf because we played for him we played as him for so long in scenario one. Hey there, may as well. Um, we just beat the game, I think. I'm pretty sure, I don't know. I think this is the ending right here. I think we just beat the game, we'll see. It was kind of anticlimactic. It was real easy compared to the final fight of Scenario 1. But the final fight of Scenario 1 was kind of complete bullshit. So, like on the balance, if this one was disappointingly easy and Scenario 1 was disappointingly crushing frustrating bullshit. I kind of prefer this one. Could have done with some more giant robots. The giant robot was the coolest thing about the Scenario 1 final fight. Dun dun dun. So we gotta, we gotta kill... Symbios anyways. <laughs> oh yeah, Domeric, it turns out. I can't even comprehend or explain Domeric's, Emperor Domeric's evil plot here. It's like he manipulated the evil final boss here to, into taking over the cannons and then manipulated us into fighting him so that he would be forced to use the tanks uh, suicide weapon, thereby taking care of both of his enemies at the same time, but then also manipulating his dead son's bodyguard into taking vengeance in such a way that we wipe out the rest of the Symbios force, and then makes it look like it's all our fault. He's like, he's like, yeah, killing 17 birds with half of a stone here. It's ridiculous how many lo how many levels this guy's operating on. Not only because he wanted the wall destroyed, that was going to happen anyways, but so that we would destroy the wall and take out uh, Garvin at the same time. Ah, uh, nah, this guy's a prick. I like him. I like him. I would side with him, but I don't think Median would. Who? Who? <laughs> oh, the other prince. I, what's he been up to? We haven't seen him since the very beginning of the game. Who? I think this is actually the first we've heard of her. Right, she was uh, like a side chick too. Uh, she's not the mother of the other two princes. Like the Emperor's side chick I'm talking about. Dun dun dun. He still got plots and schemes. He's still not done with the crazy plots and schemes here. We're on 22 layers now. <laughs> I 
And all of this compared to just how stupid and one-dimensional everyone else in this game is. That's a bit unfair. There actually are some reasonably interesting characters here. It's just in comparison to Emperor Domeric, everyone just kind of pales in comparison. It's like fucking... <laughs> fucking Tywin Lannister is a one-dimensional character compared to Emperor Domeric. So, Scenario 1 ended with a kind of a cliffhanger like this, and it ended up unresolved. Like, we were head-to-head -head with Sin the Symbios army, and then nothing actually came of it in the end here. I don't know what I'm supposed to choose here. Do I even have a choice? Does this affect anything later on? You know, I'm going to say yes here just because I really want to see a big clash with the Symbios army now. Oh, and this is where we leave off at the end of Scenario 1. So we're about to march onto the big bridge and, uh, yeah, meet up with Symbios. So, are we done yet? I'm curious now if we're gonna have another final fight after this. I doubt it. I think that this scenario is gonna end at basically the same place that Scenario 1 did. And then in Scenario 3, Julian's gonna swoop in to save the day. Somehow. I accidentally just hit confirm to advance the text there without noticing that there was a decision. I'm sure we made the right choice. Oh shit, is this this looks like another battle map. I think this was Zombie Town music from Scenario 1. Oof. Yep, he's got us there. <laughs> so I guess you guys can't see it anymore since I've, uh, I no longer put restream chat on screen here, but apparently capital A angry is brings up another stupid emote on restream chat. Only I can only I can see those from now on. You're welcome. <laughs> the Emperor's right over there. <laughs> Go scream at him, not me. Holy fuck. Angry with the ERY is a different one, too. I wish you guys could see what I'm seeing right now. Actually, I think I can, I can flip it over. I'm not going to bother, though. I'm getting distracted by the scene here. It's all dramatic and shit. Yeah, angry... With a capital A G R Y and versus a G R E Y is two different emotes on restream. Or 
Or maybe it shows up on Twitch, too? Nope, restream only. Amused isn't anything. I don't think that this is war is an excuse here. Why the hell did they have to burn down the old man's house? It's like, it's war! Burn it down! It's like, the I don't, I don't know, Emperor Domeric. The whole orphanage, really? This is war! Do it! <laughs> oh yeah, there's the bridge back there. That's where we're going to meet up with Symbios. Yeah, this is familiar now. This is where we ended in Scenario 1. That would actually be really cool if they let us fight this battle here at the end. Just let us step a little bit further along in the plot. So we, we spent an extra two hours grinding up the Median army versus the Symbios army. Who the hell is that guy on the left? I recognize Dantares and the King and the Strategist. I have no idea who that guy on the left is. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He's losing his mind. Uh, I still have no idea who that is. Oh, Symbios is, yeah, sister's husband, maybe? Brother-in-law, I guess that would make him. I mean, everything he's saying is right. It's just that it's the Emperor's plan and not Median's. Median seems a bit fickle. He's like changing his mind all the time as far as whether he's gonna go along with the Emperor or not. <laughs> this, is, this is like some Batman v Superman shit here. Yo, you're doing it to save your mother's life and her name is Martha? That's my mother's name. Okay, I guess I won't fight you. Have the kingdom. Draw? Draw what? You guys have your weapons out. All of the time. Oh, is he just gonna surrender?
Looks like no. Oh, you know what? If you... Maybe we'll go back and watch this. Uh, the opening cutscene actually shows the big epic confrontation, the one-on-one -on -one duel between Median and Symbios. I will run your country into the fucking ground! Now hand it over to me! <laughs> Didn't we just explain the thing about uh, Median's mother? <laughs> it's like a humble brag there, it's like, nope. I can't hear you. I'm just going to cover my ears and eyes and fight you, and it'll still be fine, because I'm just that awesome. I, I can't sheath my sword. They didn't draw, draw a character sprite for that. They actually are playing this along a little bit further than uh, Scenario 1. no idea what's about to happen. I will say this, this is probably the least predictable JRPG plot I have ever seen. I, d I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen from one moment to the next. Wait, Pinch Magaron is Julian? I think that's just a fragmented, se fragmented sentence right there. That would be it. That would be quite the twist. Prince Magaron is Julian, weren't you listening? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, that's where we're gonna leave it, I guess. Uh, that was a really fun ending. <laughs> I'm actually... I might, have to, I might have to look it up sometime. Apparently... So when we finished Scenario 1, it was with the retranslation patch. Uh, so it's a bit more true to the original Japanese version. Apparently the original English release in North America um, actually rewrote significant portions of the ending to make it, uh, to sort of give closure and not make it like this just big cliffhanger sequel hook or anything like that. I'm a bit curious now to see on YouTube uh, Look up on YouTube just how they closed this whole thing off. Like, yeah, it's, it's almost cruel the way they do this. Like, there's no way you're not gonna go and pick up Scenario 3 after all this, right? Like, this is such a cliffhanger. But yeah, I'm... It's, it's interesting, too. Like, the way again, the way they... Those little extra quality of life changes. The little touch-ups on the animations. The extra bio books. Certainly less... Uh, just re I guess the ruins were a little bit more bullshit this time around. I was not a fan of the ruins. But they dump enough mithril on you by the end that it doesn't really matter that you miss out on the ruins stuff anyways. But yeah, overall, this was... Uh, Decent improvement for scenar from Scenario 1. If they can just fix the difficulty, like bring it back to maybe even a little bit higher than the level of difficulty that was in Scenario 1, but with less of the bullshit ambushes with enemies just popping up right beside you half the time. And enemies just targeting random columns, rolling boulders over half your party unpredictably. If we can just get like the same level of difficulty with less of that type of stuff... Uh, we'll actually have a real solid game on our hands. Who the hell is that guy? That centaur with the beard. Oh, he must have been an enemy, because he was... 
lancing into rock right there. Actually, I wonder if we're going to get to see any party members in these uh, background battle scenes. Oh, there's our robot that we missed. Oh, he's got a laser gun. Oh, that sucks that we missed the robot. Honestly, I guess I, I guess Median's got a laser gun too, or ended up with one in the end. His sword, his sword shot like a dozen lasers to finish off the final fight. Man, and what an awesome way to finish that final battle too, with that. Uh, what was the name of the skill again? His final rapier skill. Whatever it was, it had finale right there in the name. Das Endy, that was it. Yep, we ended it with the Das Endy skill. Yeah, and it's yeah. I'm left with much less of a sour taste after that kind of ending compared to Scenario 1. A lot of it was just having played Scenario 1. We were kind of prepared for what the game might have had in store for us. Honestly, over-prepared. Oh, hey, there's the Emperor right there. I think. I think that's him. We only saw him in one battle scene. He only got attacked, I think, once out of all those scenarios where we were babysitting for him. Anyways, um, like I said, I'd kind of budgeted for like a two to three hour stream here, and that ended a lot more quickly than I was expecting, so we might just do a couple Azure Dreams tower runs to close things out here. Or maybe I could just get well rested and not have a horrible day at work tomorrow. But no, we're gonna play Azure Dreams after the credits are done scrolling. And honestly, I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break from streaming, uh, even before starting up Iconoclasts. Not that I'm tired of streaming, but I've been following I've been following behind on some stream-related business that I've I'd like to take care of. I still want to get uh, still want to get a few more emotes drawn up so that you guys can uh, check those out and again pick which one you like the best to be our sub emote. Um, I actually want to set up a poll for. Uh, for people to vote on viewers' choice type games. Uh, so yeah, I want to look into some good way to get that set up. I had a whole list of to-dos for various stream-related related things. We never did see those chessboard knights or the, the rain bloods ever again. It's like, yeah, they showed up once for that one fight. And after all that build-up, we never saw them again. Other than to just occasionally remark on their absence. Like, they keep on talking, they kept on talking about them after that point throughout the scenario, too. It's like, isn't this important to the Emperor? Where are the Rainbloods? Where are the Rainbloods? Like, after asking that question so many times, surely they've got to be over dealing with Julian in scenario three, right? Like, that's what's going to happen? Oh, that guy in the tank, he could have been a party member if we hadn't saved uh, that one archer in scenario one. This guy, who is apparently using a crossbow here. These are some of the slowest scrolling credits, credits I have ever seen. Not just the slow scrolling, but they're so spaced out too. This is taking forever. Oh, apparently Treasure had something to do with this. It's not terribly surprising. I know they were kind of big Sega Saturn supporters back in the day. Not sure exactly what they would have helped with. I don't think Treasure ever made any type of uh, RPG. I mean, you say that, Maze? Well, the problem is, is we've been playing Shining Force 3 for like 40 hours now and I kind of need a break from that if I do another 40 hours right away here I'm gonna get burned out I just know that um, I think it was it was a good idea I think I'm glad that I took the break from Shining Force after scenario one so yeah I, I feel like I do need that need a break from this every now and again or okay maybe tell me this how long is Iconoclasts because I've kind of budgeted for 
Iconoclast to take like maybe three or four streams. I didn't think it was a very long game. Like I thought we'd be done. I thought we'd be done with Iconoclasts in like less than a week. But yeah, if Iconoclast is a longer game, then uh, maybe we'll save that for after Scenario Three. <laughs> Oh, hey, we got an epilogue. Oh, and also we've got to save our clear data. <whistles> 11 to 12 hours. I mean, yeah, that's about like two and a half streams. Like, I, I could go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and be done with Iconoclasts. That was kind of the plan that I had in mind. Oh, it's the Julia Force! Oh, we get an Owl Tactician next time. This is going to be great. So looking forward to Scenario 3. So is this where we're going to start Scenario 3, or is this where we're going to end up? Because, yeah, Julian's promoted and everything already. Oh, yeah, the Vandal's Ancient Weapon. We never did see that thing. I'm actually still a little bit confused as to Julian's role in the story. He's apparently the prince of another kingdom off somewhere that's involved in this somehow. I don't remember. I'm sure we'll find out we'll find out eventually. In the meantime, it is time to save our clear data. So what if I load my clear data in this game? Can I go back and, uh, like, redo stuff, grind up characters if I want to? Okay, we're turning back time once more, so we aren't going to just leave off right from where Scenario 2 ended. By the sequel! Mystaria Realms of Lore. I have never heard of that one. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the list of games to try out, certainly. I don't know... Like I said, I'm not a big RPG guy these days, but I'd certainly give it a shot. I think pr probably at the top of my list of games to try out on Sega Saturn right now would be Panzer Dragoon Saga, and, which I've heard is really good, and, uh, ah, shit, the treasure game, the beat-em-up. Guardian Heroes also looks really good. Oh, also, uh, Virtual Hydalide. That one looks really cool, too. I'm going to have to try that one out sometime. <laughs> Bit of sarcasm, but that, that, that was one of my favorite games to watch in the, uh, the awful games block of AGDQ. Okay, so that is... Shining Force 3. Uh, we're going to take a quick... Like quite quick refreshment break just to refill my tea and switch over to Azure Dreams. And yeah, just like that, we are switched over to Azure Dreams. Oh, maybe not quite. Hey, gang. Uh, where do we go? There we go. Also, we're going to have to switch the now playing and the stream name and all that. 
Sure would be nice to get a to get a good tower run going one of these times. It's been a while since we've gotten past even floor 20. No vault. Okay, we are about ready to start up Azure Dreams. All, we've ne all we need is tea. 